Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're going to talk about Fischl and why she is broken. I feel like this is the perfect time to make this video because there's an ongoing event where you're getting a Fischl for free and a skin for her as well. And so a lot of new people are getting Fischl or getting access to Fischl's very powerful constellations. So I want to explain why she's so good and why everyone should use her. On top of that, I've seen some misinformation floating around about Fischl being not that great or expensive to build. And I really wanted to clear the air and explain why I believe she's so good and why she's used in so many meta team comps. What I'm going to be doing in this video is therefore starting by explaining why she's so powerful, as I said, the different parts of her kit that make her so strong, and then also give you guys a quick rundown on how to build her in terms of artifacts and weapons, although I will make a more detailed updated Fischl guide after Dendro or Ensumaru is released, because I believe that Fischl will get even stronger after that comes out, but we'll talk about that more later in the video. Before we begin, I want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, and with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so starting things off, let's talk about the many different aspects of Fischl's kit that make her so powerful. First of all, Oz is your elemental skill, the bird that you summon out, who deals electro damage pretty much non-stop for his entire duration, 10 seconds without constellations, and then it gets increased if you do have some, on a pretty high cooldown, although you can refresh his uptime using your burst, as every time you use this burst, Oz will get summoned once again, effectively allowing you to have Oz out pretty much at all times, or at least the whole time you're DPSing. And so because of that, you're constantly going to be applying electro and dealing electro damage to enemies, regardless of which active character you're using, as Oz will passively just be there, shooting alongside your character. What makes this so powerful though, is what this actually enables. Well, first of all, the electro application from Fischl is very good since it lasts for a long time and can happen while you're on other characters, right? Since Oz stays out there, as I just mentioned, Fischl becomes the premier electro support option because of how easy it is to just constantly apply electro. On top of that, she requires virtually no setup. You just press your skill and then swap. Whereas with a character like Yai Miko, who yes, is also quite powerful, but she requires much more time to set up, having to use your skill three times. And then if you use your burst, you have to use your skill another three times just to set up your electro. Whereas with Fischl, you press your skill and then you swap out. What's nice about this Electro application though, is that it enables reactions like Electro Charged, which might not seem like the strongest on its own, but it actually really is. The reason why Electro Charge is so good, and why I believe Electro has been underrated for so long, is because while the individual damage on each Electro Charge proc might not be that high, and may not be apparent just by looking at it, it's something that you can proc consistently and a lot of times, as you can see, the amount of times Electro Charge is proc in a normal Electro Charge or Taser team is absolutely insane, but also the team comps that can utilize this are very strong and meta defining. The reason for this is because pairing powerful hydro characters with powerful electro characters creates an insane amount of team damage on top of also allowing you to apply hydro and electro to enemies at the same time. If you don't know, electro charge is a reaction that lets you do this. By applying hydro and electro to an enemy, you can basically maintain both of them on that enemy for some time. And through a optimal rotation, you can effectively swirl both of them within an emo character that allows you to significantly increase your damage. The reason for this is because of how an emo characters and the Verdes and Venera set works. And to show this, if we take someone like Kazuha, the Verdes and Venera set that he'll be equipped on, or Sucrose, Hazo, whatever, will decrease resistance to whatever you swirl by 40%. And for a Taser team or an Electro Charge team, you're going to be reducing the resistance of both Hydro and Electro, skyrocketing the damage of every member on your team. On top of just that, for someone like Kazuha, swirling both of those elements allows you to increase the elemental damage bonus to both of them on your team, getting even more value out of one of the strongest supports in the game. And to go into a bit more detail, what's even nicer is that these teams, these Electro Charge teams, usually run very powerful characters in every slot that all do really good damage. For example, Beidou, Fischl, and Sing Chu, or Yelan, Ayato, whatever, are all characters who do a lot of damage to where buffing your Hydro and buffing your Electro is very important. While other Electro reactions like Overload can be somewhat good but annoying if you displace enemies, and Superconduct isn't really used outside of physical teams, however, even for those teams, I do want to just add this to clarify, in like a Superconduct team, you are typically going to use Fischl with someone like Eula for your generic go-to Electro Applier, same thing with many different overload teams with pyro carries like Yoimiya or Yenfei. The electro charge reaction on its own is enough to make an electro support very strong in the current meta. And so I did want to start by explaining electro charge and why it's so good before even talking any more about Fischl herself. The fact that the reaction is prevalent and the fact that you can have an off field electro applier already makes her a very good option. Now, on top of just that reaction, we know that there's going to be an electro plus dendro reaction coming out. Now, while I want to save the dendro theory crafting for another video, video when it's actually released and when we get to test it and play around with it, we do know that Dendro and Electro will have synergy with one another because there's going to be a reaction built around it. And so unless that reaction is terrible, Fischl is definitely going to be meta because she is the premier Electro support. While there's other Electro characters that are very strong, like as I said, Raiden, Beidou, Yai, as a pure off-field Electro applier, Fischl is going to be your go-to. Because of that, with the release of Sumeru, that is another reason for you to probably want to build Fischl, as I'm sure she will be meta-defining there as well. But more on that in a future video. Now, if that wasn't 
wasn't enough, a big part of Fischl's kit is also her energy generation, since Oz lasts for so long and is constantly dealing electro damage, constantly hitting enemies. While he is doing that, he will also generate electro particles for your active character. This is especially relevant for electro carries like Beto, who need a ton of energy recharge when they're ran on their own to be relevant. Since Beto is a character who scales on her burst and whose burst does an insane amount of damage, truly a very powerful 4 star character, you don't want to have to run an insane amount of energy recharge because that would give you less damage than if you were to invest in crit and attack percent. Because of that, pairing her with an electro support like Fischl basically elevates her to another tier as you can run her on as low as like 130, 135 energy recharge and then stack the rest of your stats into more offensive ones. Because of that, it is widespread knowledge that when you're running Beto, you should run her with another electro support with Fischl being the best option. Fischl allows other electro characters to shine by giving them a ton of energy and fulfilling their energy needs, allowing them to spam their burst on cooldown without needing too much energy recharge. If that wasn't enough, Oz generates so much energy that it's even just good energy generation in other teams like a Shao team, a Geo team, or more importantly, electro charge team comps. Fischl's passive energy generation gives you so much that it's always a good addition to your team as long as you don't mind having an electro support. An example of this is when people talk to me about the idea of a mono hydro team. While yes, there are some mono hydro teams that have been experimented and theory crafted, there's no real reason in my mind to run it, at least right now, over running Fischl instead of one of your hydro characters because Fischl generates a similar amount of energy than another hydro character, or really only a bit less, while also giving you a ton of damage and access to electro charge, as well as swirling both electro and hydro. Because of that, when you can slap an electro character in your team, Fischl is typically going to be your go-to. And if all of that wasn't enough, we haven't even started to talk about her damage yet. While yes, I said Oz deals good damage, and we saw that, the big chunk of her damage comes from her Ascension 4 passive, where Oz will deal an additional electro damage equal to 80% of Fischl's attack alongside your active character when they trigger an electro-related reaction. This is going to increase your damage significantly in any reaction-based team, especially electro charge, because of how much you're spamming electro charge. As we saw earlier in the video, since electro charge is a reaction that happens so often, and there are many instances of it in one rotation, this passive is going to be triggered many, many times, basically carrying your team's damage on Oz's back. If that wasn't enough, Fischl being a 4-star character is another big strength in my opinion, as her ease of access skyrockets, since not only will she be featured on many raid up banners, and you can just get her passively by pulling on any banner, she is also someone who is given for free, first of all in the current event, so if you're playing right now, you can get official guaranteed, and was given as well in the past through an event, and is also available uh, in the Star Glitter shop in certain months, as there is a rotation that is like set, a fixed rotation, and Fischl does come available every now and then. Because of that, not only can you guarantee yourself a Fischl, but you can also have an easier access to her very, very powerful constellations. Now, this is something that I haven't mentioned yet, and the reason being is that I believe Fischl is a very powerful character even without constellations, but notoriously, she does also have some really good ones. While everyone knows about Fischl C6 being really strong, there are other good ones too, like her second constellation, giving you an additional hit when you summon Oz, your third one that just gives you more damage, and then obviously, if you manage to get six other copies of Fischl for seven total, you do unlock her sixth constellation, which is insane, as it increases your Oz's duration by two seconds, and will also allow Oz to deal joint attacks with your active character for another 30% of Fischl's attack as electro damage. This is therefore just more damage and really good to have. Fischl has some really good constellations, so that is why her being a four star is so relevant. Very easy to access, so at least have one Fischl, and then also has really good constellations that you'll get through events, star glitter, and just pulling on banners. With that said though, I want to make it clear that she is not constellation dependent. Everything I said up until this point, except the constellation part, is applicable to every Fischl, and is why I believe she is so powerful. Everyone can get her, at least right now, and everyone should use her. And lastly, before moving on from this part, I do just want to say that I believe the more characters come out and the more reactions, looking at something like Sumeru with the new Dendro reactions, the better Fischl is going to get as basically the premier off-field Electro applier, since as I said, she doesn't take much time to set up and can be fit in any team that wants Electro, so she's definitely a good investment, a good character to start building, especially if you play Electro teams, and especially going into Sumeru. All right, now moving on, another strength of Fischl's genuinely is actually her builds. Now, while some people can say that, yes, she does more damage the higher you invest into her and would want like crit and attack percent, she's really someone who's very easy to gear, at least artifact set-wise, and is also very efficient even at low investment. The reason for this is because while Fischl does insane amounts of damage, even if she's not fully invested into, you're still going to be applying Electro, generating energy, and still doing some damage. And then on top of that, the more you invest into her, the stronger she becomes, so she's definitely someone worth building. And 
and also has the easiness to build in the sense of very flexible artifact sets and also weapons. In fact, Fischl's best artifact sets is going to be mix and matching two pieces based on what you've already farmed. In fact, the two pieces of any attack percent set like Gladiator, Reminiscence, Vermilion, or Echoes, mix and match like two of each or pairing it with the two piece Thundering Fury for 15% electro damage is going to make your Fischl deal insane amounts of damage. And you can also go for the four piece Thunder Soother for 35% damage against electro affected opponents, but this should only be used in certain team comps where you can maintain the electro uptime. The main thing to note here is that since these two piece attack percent sets are so common in the sense that first of all, Reminiscence comes with the emblem set, which is the best set in the game, or at least the most like commonly used on so many very powerful burst DPSs that you want this on any account, you're going to get Reminiscence passively, allowing you to at least have this two piece for your official. On top of just that, you will also generally get Gladiator passively as well through either the strong box or powerful boss enemies that you need to ascend your characters anyways. You're going to get this just by killing those bosses. So building your official on two glad to reminiscence is typically going to be very accessible. On top of that, there's other attack percent sets and the Thundering Fury that you can run if you do choose to farm them. Millilith official is also a thing, but this decreases your official's damage herself. So I really only like it for low investment or with certain hyper carries, but it's not my favorite overall as I explained in a previous video. And on top of just that, for her weapons as well, her options are very flexible in the sense that pretty much any four star weapon you may have will be really good on Fischl and the same goes with five stars. In fact, while I will include an exact weapon ranking in my official guide, what you should know is that four star weapons like Stringless and uh, the Alley Hunter are absolutely insane for her if you have them. The Battle Pass option for Essen Hunt is also very good and the Moon's Moon as well can be a good option for Fischl with, as I said, the Alley Hunter and the Stringless being her best four star options. And at R5, they're even comparable to some of the five star options, which are typically your best and again, all the offensive five stars are good on Fischl because she just wants the generic stats. The Polar Star typically being her best weapon overall, but also like Harp, Thundering Pulse, and even Amos Bow is pretty good too. Because of that, you can see that pretty much any bow you might have that is leveled will be a good option for Fischl. For her free-to-play options, while they're not the absolute best, the Prototype Crescent can be good, especially if you use the effect or just as a stat stick, or even the Wind Bloom's Ode if you do have it from a previous event, although I know that it has been quite a while. And so because of that, there's just a ton of really good like gotcha four stars for your Fischl, or five stars if you have them, and even a decent free-to-play option, which is another strength, the flexibility in her builds, not relying on one specific weapon, but also having a really good four-star one, as I said, with Stringless, Ali, and a few others. With that said, that about sums it up for this video in the sense that I pretty much covered everything that I wanted to say regarding Fischl's strength right now. Her electro damage, ability to proc reactions consistently as your go-to electro support for literally any reaction like electro charge especially, but also superconduct and overload, and with a new dendro electro reaction coming out, Fischl will be the premier option, which is why I think it's so good to invest in her. Her damage from Oz, her Ascension 4 passive and her constellations, energy generation, and everything else that I talked about in this video makes her, in my opinion, one of the strongest four stars and just characters overall in Genshin that everyone should be using. With that said, I really hope this guide was informative or this sort of video and expect more guides to come soon. With that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to like and sub as it does mean a lot to me. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.